Hi there, I'm going to be showing you my record collection today. I'm going to try to keep the intro short and sweet because we're going to be here for a while, but I will say a couple things before we begin. So this is how it's going to work. I'm going to start with my records. I'm going to do the records that are up on my wall first so I don't forget about them. Then I'm going to move on to the shelves. Those are supposed to be in alphabetical order. I can't guarantee that there won't be a few that are slightly out of place, but they should be alphabetical. I think I have around 200 records, slightly above 200. And then I'll quickly show you my CDs because why not? I'm not going to spend as long talking about them and also I have way less of them so that's going to take a lot less long. And then I guess I also have a couple of cassettes that I can show you and buy a couple I literally mean to. <laughs> I do feel like there's something for everyone in my record collection. I'm not going to act like I have the most diverse taste ever or anything. I definitely have a comfort zone but there's variety, for sure. I guess these are also recommendations. I obviously love these albums, so if there's any that you haven't heard, I would encourage you to check them out if you're interested. Let's just get started. If I think of anything else to say, I'll let you know. I'm gonna go grab the records off my wall. First up is When I Get Home by Solange. I feel like, as an adult, this is the closest thing I'm gonna get to doing show and tell again. I'm not going to pull out every record obviously, but I will show you the colored pressings. This one is clear. Next is In Utero by Nirvana. I do feel like I slightly prefer this album over Nevermind. I just like the aggression. This is a newer release. It's This Is Why by Paramore. I feel like this is one of my favorite albums of the year so far. And I have this green pressing. It also has this poster in it. Flower Boy by Tyler the Creator. It comes with this poster. There's lyrics on the other side. By the way, some of these albums that usually come with posters might not actually still have the posters in them because I might have used them. Power, Corruption, and Lies by New Order. Age of Consent is one of my favorite songs of all time. Have You in My Wilderness by Julia Holter. The sleeve is a little bit beat up, but the record is fine. I think that this album is absolutely enchanting. Untitled Unmastered by Kendrick Lamar. This is weirdly the only Kendrick album that I own on vinyl. By the way, I feel like this goes without saying, but I don't own every record that I like on vinyl. Records are kind of expensive. I can't get everything that I want. My want list on Discogs is literally terrifying. So if you're thinking of commenting, hey, you don't have this or that. Is that on purpose? Does that mean you don't like it? We're not going to do that, okay? We're not doing that. I do also keep my records in these outer sleeves. I'm just taking them out so the glare isn't as bad. Spirit of Eden by Talk Talk. I love all of Talk Talk's albums, but especially the last two, this one and Laughing Stock. I listen to those albums a lot while I'm falling asleep, and I know that that sounds backhanded, but I have a hard time falling asleep without music, and I can only do that with albums that I find super comforting, so it is high praise, I promise. It also comes with this DVD that has a B-side on it, I believe. To be honest, I've never listened to it because I just don't really use DVDs. And the last album that was on my wall is The Velvet Underground and Nico by The Velvet Underground and Nico. I went through a weird phase when I was like 15 or 16 where I literally only listened to music from the 60s and 70s and I refused to listen to anything more modern because I was going through that annoying born in the wrong generation, not like other girls phase. This was one of my go-to albums at the time and I still think it's one of the greatest albums ever made. Okay, I have another stack. So speaking of things being in the wrong order, I have Midnight Marauders by A Tribe Called Quest. This should be in with the T's. This is the disaster already. Blue Rev by Always. This was one of my favorite albums of last year. I got this as a gift for Christmas because when people don't know what to get me, they get me records, which is very sweet and very thoughtful. Little Earthquakes by Tori Amos. This was another gift for my birthday a few years ago. I love Tori, especially her 90s albums. Fetch the Bolt Cutters by Fiona Apple. She is one of my favorite musicians ever, and I feel like this is potentially my favorite album of hers, but I have a hard time committing to that because they're all excellent. Feels by Animal Collective. I have a hard time believing that this album is something that exists for real and isn't just a fever dream. This is what the inside of my brain sounds like. And I also really love this album artwork. This next section is dedicated to my teenage self. I have some Arctic Monkeys records. Whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. Suck it and see. Ta-da. I have the stereotypical young person with a record player album. This is AM, obviously. <laughs> and finally, Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino. This is actually one of my favorites from them. Also, this is the silver pressing. Baduism by Erica Badu. 
This album is ridiculously smooth. It's also kind of wild that this is her debut album. Burning From the Inside by Bauhaus, a little bit of goth rock. She's in Parties is an incredible song. It's this kind of robin egg blue pressing. I feel like we're gonna learn throughout this video that I'm not good at describing colors. I have a couple of Beach Boys albums. I have Pet Sounds, obviously. I feel like you kind of have to have this one. It's a classic. And then I also have this one. It's 15 big ones. I have a couple of Beach House albums. This is Teen Dream. This is their best album, in my opinion. It just feels like a warm hug in album form. And also Once Twice Melody, which was one of my favorite albums of last year. It has this absolutely massive poster. <laughs> and the record sleeves are also very pretty. This is embarrassing. I don't own any actual Beatles albums. I just have these two compilations. I do have some CDs though, so there's that. This one is 1962 to 1966. Then this one is 1967 to 1970. Lemonade by Beyonce. It comes with this photo booklet here, so that's what that looks like. I feel like if anything this video is just showing off how uncoordinated I am. <laughs> and then the record- oh god that is keying out. The records are yellow. What is going on here? What? I don't understand. I just need to move them really quickly. Anyways, the records are yellow. You're just gonna have to take my word for it, which is obviously fitting with the album. Dragon New Warm Mountain I Believe in You by Big Thief. This is such a cozy album and I feel like it just gets better and better every time I listen to it. Homogenic by Bjork. I have nothing to say other than Holy shit, this is such a perfect album. The Best of Blondie, I really should have parallel lines, but for now I just have this compilation. Debbie Harry is a badass, she's the best. I I by Boney Vare. This is packaged quite weirdly. It's really thick and uh, I don't really know how to describe it. It has this like plastic outer casing and then these two thick pieces of cardboard on the inside. I only have two David Bowie records, which is criminal because he's one of my favorite musicians ever. I do have a lot of CDs though, so don't be distressed, don't fret. I have Young Americans. I also have Low, which is probably my favorite album of his other than maybe Station to Station. It comes with this fan club information booklet, which I think is funny because it's 2023. <laughs> All right, I took a break, which is why the lighting's different. It's later in the day. Let's continue. I have the self-titled Boy Genius EP. I haven't picked up the record yet, but I do plan on doing that. And how fitting that they would end up next to each other. I have a couple of Phoebe Bridgers records, so this is Stranger in the Alps. I also have Copycat Killer. This has some more kind of stripped back versions of some of the songs on Punisher. I don't actually have Punisher for some reason. I don't know. I love that album though. Why is this keying? Why does this keep happening? This is a bright green record. You can kind of tell on the edges. I'm just going to include videos of the ones that aren't showing up correctly. This is bright green. I believe it was described as Mountain Blast. You Forgot It in People by Broken Social Scene. This is the kind of album where it's hard to pick out specific songs because half the track list is just like greatest of all time level songs. Oh god, okay. Grace by Jeff Buckley. I love this album. I could rave for an hour straight about how much I love this album. I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to other people's opinions about music. You can love things that I hate, you can hate things that I love, I don't care. But if you don't love this album, I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to have opinions, and I'm kidding, but only kind of. Specifically, the song Lover You Should Have Come Over makes me want to lay face down in the middle of the road. I love this album so much, it means a lot to me my beloved. And I will end that there before I start sobbing. <laughs> and speaking of Jeff Buckley, I have Blue Afternoon by Tim Buckley, his father. He was a really interesting musician. I feel like there's no one quite like him. He's definitely made some weird stuff, but this album is pretty approachable. It's a cool combination of folk and jazz. Just Another Diamond Day by Vashti Bunyan. It is a beautiful folk album. It's so soothing, so soft, so delicate. When you listen to it, it's like she's in the room with you singing you a lullaby. It's so incredibly relaxing to listen to. So we've hit the artists that I probably own the most records from. I cannot pick them all up at once. It's Kate Bush. 
If you didn't know, Kate Bush is my favorite artist of all time. She was a huge part of getting me more interested in music and expanding my taste. Her music has really been there for me over the years. It means a lot to me, so I've spent a lot of money on it. Let's get through these. The Kick Inside, Lionheart, Kate Bush on Stage, which is obviously a live album or EP, I guess. Never Forever, which potential hot take maybe. This is my favorite album of hers. The Dreaming, which is a close second. Hounds of Love, The Sensual World, The Red Shoes. I know that this album gets a lot of flack and I get it, but this has some of her best songs. Top of the City is one of my favorite Kate Bush songs, also the Song of Solomon. Christ, this one is heavy. Ariel. Oh god, it is hard to make this look graceful. This one also comes with a lyric booklet. I think all of them from this point on do, though. So that's the lyric booklet. Oh my god, <laughs> it's like a workout to lift these. These are heavy records. 50 words for snow. So there that is. That's a lady making out with a snowman. Kate Bush has got to be the only artist in history to write a song about having sex with a snowman, right? She's got to be. Director's Cut. There's that one. It is really hard to show these off in any kind of efficient way. And finally, I have this box set that has four records inside. Number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. And those are like b-sides, alternative mixes, covers, that kind of thing. And thus concludes my Kate Bush collection. Thank you for sticking through that with me. <laughs> Elephobia by Cage the Elephant. I have a few Cocteau Twins records. Victoria Land, Bluebell Knoll, and Heaven or Las Vegas. If you were to ask me what my favorite album of all time is, I don't have one specific answer. I have a few that I would kind of cycle through depending on when you asked me, and this is one of them. This is a potential favorite album of all time. Perry Como, Dream Along With Me, this is completely keying out. This was from the Mystery Record Box video, so I guess spoiler alert if you haven't seen that. Pornography by The Cure. YouTube's little naughty word detecting robots are not gonna like this one. Melt My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. This was another favorite album from last year. I talked about this one a bit in my year-end list. Balloon Mind State by De La Soul. I was a really big fan of Three Feet High and Rising for a long time, and then when they added their music to streaming services recently, I decided to check out their other albums, and I love this one. I have a bunch of Lana Del Rey records. It was inevitable. I had a Tumblr account and childhood trauma, so here we are. This is the Born to Die, the Paradise Edition box set. Oop, wrong way. So this has Born to Die and the Paradise EP, Ultraviolence, Honeymoon, which first of all is one of my favorite albums of hers. I love this one a lot, but also it's this transparent red pressing, which is really pretty. Lust for Life. I feel like I'm like Vanna White right now. Norman fucking Rockwell, which is my favorite album that she has ever made. Chemtrails Over the Country Club. I have the gray pressing. So there's that one. Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass. I have this creamy kind of beige pressing blue banisters. And there's a very cute picture on the back. I have this white pressing and I don't actually have Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard yet. I love that one though, so I will be picking it up eventually. Violator by Depeche Mode. This is, oh god, I just showed something NSFW. Okay, let me try that again. <laughs> Violator by Depeche Mode. I can't show you the gatefold because there's a naked woman in it. But this is the most perfect combination ever of darkness and catchiness. It's kind of crazy how something so gloomy can be so fun to listen to. Beware of the Dogs by Stella Donnelly. I love how much personality this album has, which is something that I think is often lacking in indie pop music like this. I partially want to call it playful, but there's also a lot of subject matter in here that is very not playful. 
There's also something just so incredibly ominous about this album cover. Bringing It All Back Home by Bob Dylan. This is gonna sound really dumb, but I didn't realize that he was holding a cat on the cover for the longest time. I am not a Bob Dylan expert because I can't commit to listening to all seven billion of his albums, but I love the few that I've heard. This is one of them. God's Favorite Customer by Father John Misty. And it's this really cool transparent purple swirly kind of pressing. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it. The ballet, Great Moments of Music, Arthur Fiedler, and the Boston Pops Orchestra. This was also from the Mystery Record Box video. I have a few from FKA Twigs. This is LP1. Magdalene. I think this is fine to show. Kind of, we're kind of pushing it. Blame YouTube. It's their rules, not mine. I'm not even really sure what the rules are. I'm just... I don't want to break them by accident. I have the red pressing and Capri songs. I also really loved this one from last year. Lungs by Florence and the Machine. I have kind of a dark burgundy-ish red pressing. There's that. Is that maroon? Is that burgundy? Is there a difference? Hell if I know. I have two Fleetwood Mac records. I have Rumors. I'm pretty sure this just comes with the record player. I think it's illegal to have a record player and not own this record, and I'm not taking any chances. And then I have Tango in the Night. I have a weird emotional attachment to this album. It's one of my main comfort albums, and this pressing is dark green. Fugazi, self-titled EP. I feel like this one maybe looks a little bit out of place, I don't know. But I remember hearing Waiting Room for the first time and feeling like I just unlocked a whole new section in my brain. Maggot Brain by Funkadelic. I'm convinced that the guitar solo at the beginning of this album opens up a portal to a different dimension. It can be a bizarre album at times, but it's also just immaculate. Also, I love the album art because it's exactly how listening to this album feels. This next one is one of my favorites in my collection, actually. It's Mother Earth's Plantasia by Mort Garson. I initially checked this out because I was very charmed by the whole backstory of it, but this is actually one of my most listened to records. I listen to this all the time. The pressing is green, which is not showing up right now, but it's green, which is very fitting for the whole concept of the album. It comes with this plant care guide, which is just so perfect. And then also the download card has seeds in it, so you can plant it, which I think is just adorable. Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye. It feels silly trying to sum up how good this album is in a couple of sentences because I think everybody already knows it's amazing. I have three Ariana Grande records. Dangerous Woman. It's this purple and black kind of swirly pressing. It kind of reminds me of an oil spill or something. Sweetener. And thank you, next. And we have the absolute weirdest transition ever into Lift Your Skinny Fists Like Antennas to Heaven by Godspeed You Black Emperor. I'm gonna say the absolute most corny, cliche thing humanly possible. This is more of an experience than an album. It's hard to put into words. You kind of just need to feel it, and then you know. Visions by Grimes. Days Are Gone by Haim. I initially checked this album out. Short story time. I initially checked this album out, I guess it would have been like a year or two after it came out maybe, because a guy that I had a huge crush on was like, hey, have you ever heard the song My Song 5 by Haim? It's like really crazy, really good. And I was like, yeah, I've totally heard that because I was a dumb teenager and I wanted to lie for attention even though I hadn't heard it. And then I was like, well, I guess now that I said I heard it, I might as well actually listen to it. And I really liked it, and I really liked this album. Mythopoetics by Half Wave. This was one of my favorite albums of 2021. It's a great art pop record, and I have a gold pressing. Rid of Me by PJ Harvey. I wish I had more of her albums. I do have some CDs. I think that this is her best, although it's kind of hard to pick, but it's just so cathartic to listen to. Rebel Yell by Billy Idol. To be completely honest, I kind of just bought this because, first of all, I do like the title track, Rebel Yell, but also I love the song Eyes Without a Face. That one is great. The rest of it is fine. Jubilee by Japanese Breakfast. This is a fun one. I have some Carly Rae Jepsen records. Emotion, and I have a pink pressing, so there's that one. 
emotion side B. I don't know why this keeps happening. And I actually just have dedicated side B. I don't have dedicated. I don't know why. Time and Place by Caro Caro Benito. I feel like this has to be one of my most listened to records. I have been consistently obsessed with this since I first heard it. Kid See Ghosts, self-titled. Tapestry by Carol King. This is another one that you kind of just have to own. And also I loved a lot of these songs as a kid, so very nostalgic for me. I've got some Lady Gaga. I feel like I never really get to talk about it, but I love Lady Gaga. The Fame. I absolutely adored this album as a kid. I have this transparent light blue pressing. I feel like I remember this being called Glacier Blue. For some reason I remember that. Art Pop, aka her best album. And I have Joanne. She's So Unusual by Cyndi Lauper. This is such a mood boost of an album. It has such a fun attitude to it. This Is Happening by LCD Sound System. I can't believe that Dance Yourself Clean is a real song and that I have the privilege of listening to it. Pompeii by Kate LeBon. Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. I feel like this album got us all through quarantine and I know I definitely needed it when it came out. I needed to own it. Sometimes I Might Be Introvert by Little Sims. I must say this is probably my favorite album of the decade so far. It is basically flawless. This pressing is a red and yellow split, which is not showing up very well. I have some Lord records. First up is Pure Heroine. Melodrama. It also comes with this poster. Solar Power, which I don't think I can fully show. It doesn't show anything, but it came with a sensor sticker, so I'm just gonna take the hint. And lastly, this one, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, but there's a title. <laughs> there it is. I'm about halfway through-ish, and this isn't gonna make a difference for you, but I think I'm gonna come back tomorrow and try to finish this. I don't know how long this is gonna be once it's edited, but unedited so far it's like two hours, so I'm kind of tired. I'm gonna be back in two seconds for you, but tomorrow for me. Bye. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna see how many more I can get through. <laughs> Mad Villainy by Mad Villain. There is literally nothing left to be said about this album, but it deserves all of the praise that it gets. The Melocrino strings play the music of Irving Berlin mystery record box video again. Kala by M.I.A. This is just pure nostalgia in album form for me, so I'm biased, but I do think it's very creative and very special. I have some Joni Mitchell records. I've actually been going through a huge Joni Mitchell phase lately. I don't know what's going on, but a couple of these are very recent purchases. Song to a Seagull. This one is not in the greatest shape ever. I need to be careful showing you the gatefold because someone's name and phone number is written in there and I don't feel like doxing anybody today. The Hissing of Summer Lawns. Hajira, which is probably my favorite Joni album, at least as of right now. And Mingus. Laurel Hell by Mitski. It is kind of unfortunate that this is the only album of hers that I own because while I do like it, it is my least favorite of hers, but I do still enjoy it. The Lonesome Crowded West by Modest Mouse. This one is packaged super strangely, so the two different discs come in these two different sleeves. And also, the order of the track list is a little bit different on vinyl, which is odd. I have a few from Casey Musgraves. I actually don't own Same Trailer Different Park, which is my favorite of hers, so first up is Pageant Material. The record is this kind of bubblegummy pink, Golden Hour, and I have the clear pressing of this one. There that is. And I have Starcrossed. This was a gift. I am not in love with this album, which is a shame because I love the rest of her discography, but this one just never clicked with me. I like some of the songs, but overall, I rarely revisit this as an album. That being said, the packaging on this is very cool. It opens up like that, the record's inside, so. Miles and Lenny, this was mystery record box video once again. I have two Joanna Newsome albums. First up, The Milk-Eyed Mender. And then I have this box set for Have One On Me. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. So there are three records inside. Obviously it's quite a long album. And then 
It also comes with lyrics. Belladonna by Stevie Nicks, aka the coolest person ever, basically. Stevie Nicks basically raised me. She's basically my mom. Hi, mom. The first songs by Laura Nairo. There's something about Laura Nairo's voice and presence that I find so captivating. I feel like she could sing anything in the world and I would just be in a trance. Like, if she was my calculus professor and she sang everything, I would have learned the chain rule very quickly. Stankonia by Outkast. I want to say that this is Outkast's best album, but I don't know if I'm just being blinded by the fact that Bombs Over Baghdad is like the coolest song ever. I have three more Paramore records other than This Is Why, which I already showed you. So this is actually one of my favorites in my collection. It's Riot, and I have a bright orange pressing of this one that just looks so satisfying to me. There it is. I love this one. Their self-titled album. And After Laughter. And this is the color of the pressing. I feel like I'm running out of adjectives to describe colors at this point. Okay, so this is Wide Awake by Parquet Courts. Um, the way that this is written just makes me want to scream it, but I won't. This is an absolute blast to listen to, and it's also very thoughtful. Do Little by Pixies. This album makes me feel every single emotion at once, so that's kind of cool. Tang by Caroline Polachek. This is what the record looks like. It's kind of an olivey green. It also comes with a poster. I really need to get Desire I Want to Turn Into You. That might come as a surprise, but it's actually really grown on me since I first made my video on it. I love that album a lot, and I do plan on getting it soon. Dummy by Portishead. Glory Box is top three songs of all time, easily. I have two Prince albums, or I guess Prince and the Revolution. I have Purple Rain of course. And I also have Around the World in a Day. Prince was the first artist that I ever really got into as a kid, and by a kid I literally mean like four or five. I was specifically obsessed with the song Raspberry Beret, which is on this album. I could not get enough of that song. I specifically remember showing that song to one of my friends from kindergarten and being like, isn't this the coolest thing ever? Don't you love this song so much? And she was like, Okay, whatever. Let's go back to listening to Barbie Girl. Like, I, I don't know what was wrong with me. I've always been a little bit off-putting. <laughs> Please don't yell at me. I only have one Radiohead record. I have In Rainbows. Um, this is one of my favorites from them though, but I should have more. I know. Coney Island Baby by Lou Reed. I really love the title track, Coney Island Baby. And this record is white. I have Manifesto by Roxy Music. It is definitely not their best, but it's still Roxy Music, so I still like it. The Best of Sade by Sade. I feel like when I first started collecting records, I bought a lot of these compilation albums because it seemed like the quickest way to get the songs that I loved by a specific artist without buying multiple albums. And I would definitely prefer to just have standard albums rather than listen to a compilation, but I do feel like this one was pretty well curated. This is a good one. Santana, self-titled. This is a history record box video. Sawayama by Rina Sawayama. I realize that I have a lot of S's. I don't know why every artist I like's name starts with S or has a last name that starts with S. I have this gold pressing. Boots by Nancy Sinatra. Uh, apparently the person that had this before me really liked as Tears Go By, the Rolling Stones cover. Juju by Susie and the Banshees. Discovering their music when I was younger permanently changed me as a person. I'll let you decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. There's a riot going on, Sly and the Family Stone. This is just another one of those essential albums that everybody should know. Roman Candle by Elliot Smith. I love Elliot Smith. It's a shame that I only own one of his records. Horses by Patti Smith. Queen of Punk. I feel like this album has one of the greatest opening songs of all time with Gloria. I love all of the songs, but that one is especially mind-blowing. Um, <laughs> Non-Stop Erotic Cabaret by Soft Cell. I feel like this is just peak camp. You either get it or you don't. I, I don't know what to say about this one. Goo by Sonic Youth. This is some of my favorite album art of all time. Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen. 
I remember that I put off listening to this album for the longest time because I didn't think that I would like it, but that was dumb. This is an excellent album. P for the Tillerman, Cat Stevens. This one is super soothing. I have a bunch of Sufjan Stevens. He's one of my favorite artists. Michigan. All these years later, I am still holding out hope that he's going to finish the state's project. <laughs> I love being delusional. Seven Swans. I feel like this one is super underrated in his discography. This one's gorgeous. Illinois. This is, at times, my favorite album of all time. I am so grateful that this exists. I could cry if I think about it too hard. This one is so special to me. Carrie and Lowell, of course. And I have to be careful showing this one because there's boobs on the cover. A beginner's mind. Oh god. There we go. <laughs> I have a few by the strokes. Here is... Is this it? Room on fire. I have first impressions of earth. Angles. And finally, the new abnormal. This one is packaged interestingly. It opens up at the top. There's a few from St. Vincent. Strange Mercy. This is... Probably my favorite St. Vincent album. Mass Seduction, Mass Education, which are stripped back versions of the songs from Mass Seduction. I got this as a gift. I actually really enjoy it. I enjoy some of the versions on this album better than the originals. And this is a fun one. I have Daddy's Home. I really love this album. First of all, it's a fun pressing. I love the old wallpaper look of these sleeves. It's kind of this grayish marble kind of pressing, and I got this signed poster with it. I did not order it signed, but I guess they just threw them in with some random records because I got one. It also came with a poster and a bunch of stickers and stuff. I have two by Donna Summer. This is Four Seasons of Love. Do yourself a favor and go listen to this if you haven't already. You're welcome. And I also have Bad Girls. Breakfast in America by Super Tramp. The reason I have this one is when I started collecting records, my mom was like, hey, this was the first album I ever bought. You need to have it too. And I was like, okay. And I like it. It's pretty good. I have a bunch of Taylor Swift. Let's just do it. Every day I try harder and harder to hide my identity as a Taylor Swift fan. And every day I fail. Self-titled. The original Fearless Platinum Edition. And the Taylor's version, this is so f heavy, oh my god, and it's gold. Speak Now, aka the best thing she's ever made. Red, red Taylor's version. The albums are so ridiculously long, they have so many discs. 1989, fun fact, this was the first record I ever bought. Reputation, it's a picture disc, fun fact. I don't even like this album. I don't really like this pressing, but the completionist in me told me I needed to have it, which I know makes no sense. I have never claimed to be a rational person. Lover. This has two different discs. Hold on. First one pink, second one blue. Folklore. This is obviously an alternate cover. This is the Betty's Garden version, and the records are this kind of grayish purple. And finally, I have evermore. Records are green. I don't have Midnight's yet, and I don't know if I'm gonna get Midnight's because I don't really like Midnight's, but again, the completionist in me is telling me to buy it, which is bad, so I'm trying to resist, but I don't know. I'm probably gonna end up getting it. It's just so unsatisfying to have an artist's entire discography except for one album, so I don't know. We're within reach of the finish line, just a couple more stacks. I have a couple by Talking Heads. First is Remain in Light, and also Speaking in Tongues. I know that this is kind of basic, but This Must Be the Place is one of my favorite songs. A Poem Unlimited by US Girls. This has everything you could ever want. It's a joy to listen to. It's well written. And as a bonus, the album cover is absolutely beautiful. Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. I was obsessed with Amy Winehouse as a kid, so I had to have this. This one is a little weird. I have the Grease soundtrack. I really couldn't care less about Grease as a movie, but I do like some of the songs. It's this kind of pastel -y pink. I Know I'm Funny, Haha ha, by Faye Webster. It also comes with 
those little stickers, which is really cute. After Hours by The Weeknd. I must say, now that I've had more time with it, I do feel like this is the best thing he's ever made. I have two from Wiseblood. First of all, Titanic Rising. This was my favorite album of the 2010s. And In the Darkness, Hearts Aglow. This was my favorite album of last year. If you couldn't tell, I really love Wiseblood. <laughs> Petals for Armor by Haley Williams. This is the color of the records. In Square Circle by Stevie Wonder. I don't know if it'll come across on camera, but the cover has a cool texture to it. It's like embossed, kind of. We've done it. We've reached the final record, Odyssey and Oracle by the Zombies. And that is my record collection. Okay, I'm going to take a break and then I will come back later to show you my CD collection. But yeah, as far as records go, I guess let me know what you like from my collection. Let me know what albums are your favorite? Let me know if you were to break into my house, what you would steal first. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just love collecting records. And I know I acted like that was kind of a chore and that it was super tiring. And it kind of was, but I also really enjoyed doing it. I love just like sitting on my floor and looking at my records sometimes. So once people said that they wanted a record collection video, I was kind of excited about it. Thank you for letting me do that. Thank you for sticking through it if you're still watching. All right, let's complete this thing. I have my CDs right behind me. Thankfully, I can actually move those, so that makes that a lot easier. I think I have about 75 CDs. I'm just gonna zoom through them, so let's do this. I have three Tori Amos albums, Little Earthquakes, from the Choir Girl Hotel, which I think is my favorite of hers. Boys for Pele. And then I also have this single CD for Tori. It's Caught in a Light Sneeze. It's a song off of Boys for Pele. And then it has four B-sides as well. My mom picked this up for me at a record store recently because she knows I love Tori. I also have three from Fiona Apple. I have Tidal, When the Pawn, and Extraordinary Machine. Funeral by Arcade Fire. Seven by Beach House. That holographic cover's really going off right now. I have some Beatles CDs. A Hard Day's Night, Revolver, which is their best album, Fight Me, but don't actually, it's fine if you disagree, and Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Debut by Bjork, Take the Sadness Out of Saturday Night by Bleachers, this is signed by Jack Antonoff, Bon Iver, self-titled, there's some David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, Aladdin Sane, Diamond Dogs, this is just an absolutely atrocious album cover, by the way. I don't, I mean, I like the album, but dude. Low and Lodger. I love David Bowie with all my heart, but that man had a few atrocious album covers, man. Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. I thought I had every Kate Bush album on CD, but apparently I'm missing one. So that's a travesty. I have The Kick Inside, Lionheart, Never Forever, Dreaming, Hounds of Love, the Sensual World, The Red Shoes, I just blanked on that album title, Ariel, 50 Words for Snow. I also have The Whole Story, which is like a greatest hits album. There's an alternate version of Wuthering Heights on this that's great. I do not have director's cut. I thought I had it, but apparently I don't, so I will be retracting my title as number one Kate Bush fan. I am so sorry. Victoria Land by Cocteau Twins. Homework by Daft Punk. I have two Lana Del Rey CDs, Chemtrails Over the Country Club, this one is signed by Lana, which you can't really see on camera, and Blue Bannisters. Waiting for the Sun by The Doors. I went through a huge phase with The Doors and Jim Morrison when I was a teenager. Tumblr did irreparable damage to my mental health, I'm telling you. Tango in the Night by Fleetwood Mac. Ceremonials by Florence and the Machine. I have a few from PJ Harvey rid of me, stories from the city, stories from the sea, and to bring you my love. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, Janet by Janet Jackson. I could have sworn that I had a copy of The Velvet Rope on CD, but I cannot find it for the life of me, so I'm pretty sure I have it, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Someone broke into my room and only stole The Velvet Rope by Janet Jackson, which is honestly very valid. Solar Power by Lord. This isn't actually a CD, it's just 
It's like a lyric booklet. There's cards with drawings on them and stuff. I just, it's CD shaped, so I keep it in with my CDs. Ray of Light by Madonna. I know that this is awful to say, but this is actually the only Madonna album I've ever heard all the way through. I do love it though. It is really good. Superfly by Curtis Mayfield. I have never seen this movie. I just really like the soundtrack. I have a stack of Joni Mitchell, Clouds, Ladies of the Canyon, Court and Spark, The Hissing of Summer Lawns, and The Turbulent Indigo. I really like this album. If you're looking to get into later era Joni Mitchell, I would recommend this one. The Magdalene Laundries is one of my favorite songs she's ever made. Electric Lady by Janelle Monet. Moon Dance by Van Morrison, Same Trailer Different Park by Casey Musgraves, Third by Portishead and Portishead by Portishead, 1999 by Prince, I can't believe he wrote a whole album about the year I was born just for me, The Bends by Radiohead and also Amnesiac by Radiohead, An Evening with Silk Sonic by Silk Sonic, XO by Elliot Smith, Soviet Kitsch by Regina Spector, the Age of Odds by Sufjan Stevens, and also Planetarium by Sufjan Stevens, Nico Mully, Bryce Dessner, and James McAllister. I had to read the names for that, I'm sorry. Is This It by The Strokes. I have some Taylor Swift. I have Fearless, Fearless Taylor's version, which is signed by Taylor. Speak Now. I could be wrong, but I think this is the first album that I ever bought with my own money. I think. Folklore. This is also signed. This was sent to me by a lovely girl on Twitter, coincidentally named Taylor, so shout out to her for that, and Evermore, which is also signed. I do also have Midnight's on CD because this was my consolation prize for not buying it on vinyl because CDs are obviously quite a bit less expensive. Igor by Tyler the Creator. And finally, Stand For Myself by Yola, and those are all of my CDs. Oh yeah, I should show you those cassettes. I have two cassettes. Okay, I have The White Album by The Beatles, and I have Control by Janet Jackson. So, that was quick and easy. So, I think that's everything. I am not showing you my 45s because I have literally hundreds of them, and that would take a billion years, so we're not doing that in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If anybody is still watching this, this is definitely a different type of video for me. I'm not used to talking this much. I feel very exposed right now. This took quite a bit of time, so if you feel like it, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out my social medias and everything. No pressure. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Also, this feels super presumptuous and kind of obnoxious to say, but if anybody does actually check out an album because of this video, feel free to let me know. Let me know what you thought. I always love getting comments or DMs from people telling me that they checked out an album because of me. I think that that is super sweet. It's the coolest feeling, so let me know if that happens. I would love to know. And that's all from me. I'm gonna go into my editing hell now because this video uncut is several hours long at this point. So I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.